I'm Katie Kempner and welcome to Perspectives. We're here at TED Women doing a bunch of live perspectives. And right now I'm very excited to be talking with Alison Hunt. Hi. Hi. So you have had a very interesting career. You were in advertising for a long time, now you're in research. Can you talk a little bit about your career? Absolutely. I am, I'm a Maritimer from the East Coast of Canada and I moved to Toronto after university to work in advertising. That was my specific goal. And after four agencies, uh, 10 years, I switched to marketing. Um, in the agency world, I worked at the two, two big dead guy agencies. I call them, you know, like the Leo Burnett's and the Young and Rubicam's right, with right. the dead guy name on the door. And I worked at two small, really creative boutiques. So I felt like I really got a great taste of advertising and I loved it. Uh, then I moved to uh, be the director of marketing at Cineplex. And that was a really fun role. I realized I didn't love to be a client. I wanted to be on the supplier side. Really? And out of the blue, a woman who had been, uh, who'd done a market research project for me when I was at taxi advertising, phoned me and said, you should come work in research. And I thought, like, never wanted to go into research, hated the sound of it, at least advertising sounded cool, movies sounded cool. So I, I you know, kind of went to the interview like this, I was like, really, tell me more, why do I want to do that? I loved it and there was no looking back. I stayed at the company for six years and then I left and started to work for myself 10 years ago. We had talked about this just a, a teeny bit before we started filming about emotions in marketing and emotions in business. Women are often sort of told to leave their emotions at the door when it comes to business. Do you think that that's a, the right approach? I think there's a time and a place to be emotional at work. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you want to be known for being emotional. But when we think about women being emotional at work, we think of them, you know, it's crying. They're in the bathroom crying in the stall and someone comes and finds them. But I remember at one um, pretty early job in advertising where in my performance review, my boss told me to stop being so funny at work. And I said, really? Like, and I, I felt really s s nervous about that. And I said, who said that? And I was trying to think which client thought I was inappropriate in a meeting. And it turned out it was just her thought about me. Her personal opinion. Yeah, her personal opinion. And so hmm. I said, well, you know, no one's complaining. And when I straighten up and fly right and get serious and say like, no, we have to do this. I'm taken extra seriously. So I really discounted that review and I started to look for another job. Well, I was gonna say, you know, for someone listening to this who's starting out or somewhere in their career, what if they do have a boss that's telling them that, you know, things that really have nothing to do with their performance, should they listen? I think listening is important. I know mm -hmm. that I changed from advertising to marketing and marketing to market research because of what other people saw and thought about me and I took their opinions really seriously and they saw me differently than I could ever see myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. So I think you do listen and then you decide what to really internalize and keep and what to, what to walk away from. In your career then, you've made different changes based on things that have come your way. A lot of people think, well, you know, I have to have a plan, I have to have a five-year plan, I have to have a 10-year plan. Do you think that that is a good way to start out in your career or do you think it's better to sort of be open to possibilities yeah. or maybe a combination of both? I think it's nice to have a plan and then to be really open. I never would have got into research and I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. But I really respected the woman who said to me, you know, I saw you working on the agency side as I did the research side and the things you were asking about me were really smart and you made sense and I just thought you could you could really excel at this and I can't even I can't stress enough that I would never have made that move and she was truly right I think what's more important to people is so often now younger people are being told to uh, you know to only do work that you love and and find your passion and you know what your first few jobs aren't going to be that yeah. It's going to be a bit of a gong show. You're going to be working hard and long and stuffing envelopes. Maybe you're doing things that you're like, really, this is the job? Yeah, it is for the first few years. It just is. So you have to get through that to get to the good stuff. You've got to eat your vegetables before you get dessert. But it'll come to you, but you just have to play through the pain and, and do that kind of work. You know, it's interesting because I read an article the other day in the New York Times and it was about millennials and how they view happiness. Mm -hmm. And one of the things had to do with their careers and it said they're not as interested in power and money as their parents are, but they want to make sure that they're satisfied all the time. And I read that and I just sort of thought, Hmm, well, I don't know most people that start out in the first job and they're satisfied all the time because you sort of have to pay your dues. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something satisfying. Yeah. I can reflect back on my first real boss at my first full-time job, who is just an amazing boss. And he said, you know, you stay at work late because you can, but you could leave with me at 5.30. You're never going to be rewarded here for staying, so just go home. And it really was a, a huge slap in the face. But then I thought, he's right. I need to be great at this job because I, I'm not here all the time and that I'm out there in the world seeing advertising, seeing people living a life and bringing a great version of me to work every day. Yeah. 
And so it was great advice, although I think if I'd heard it later, it might have, I might have pushed back on it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. especially good advice for younger people that think yeah. maybe they can't say no, but you don't have to be the yes yeah. person for every single thing. I think thing. there's two populations of, of people under 30, so that 27, 28 year old. And I, I'm on the board of TEDx Toronto, and I'm seeing the great 27 year olds who are keen and motivated and gunning it, and they're sponges when they're around people who are older than them and they want to learn everything. And then I see the person who's leaving at 4.59 because they have ultimate frisbee. Right. And it's like, well, I'm out of here. It's like, well, then the job you have, you better really like. Because if you have to <laughs> right. leave, then that's, you know, if you can never stay till 501, then this is, you're here. Welcome yeah. to your 40 years, you know? Right. <laughs> so you're involved with TED. We're here at TED Women. There are so many conversations going on right now. What is it that you're hoping to hear and what do you think may not be brought up that should be? What's well, funny, I've been going to TED since 2005 and every year I try make sure I'm in the audience for every talk because you, the one you miss is the one everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. Like one year I literally only missed one talk and it was the one. So I, I, I try not to bring any hopes or expectations because often it's the person you've never heard of that is the, the mind-blowing talk. Um, I think every talk there's always one thing that you can take and bring forward in your life. Mm -hmm. One year it was a, there was a talk that really was about as irrelevant to me as it could possibly be, but I like the guy's slides a lot. And when I went home, right. I changed, <laughs> went back to work and I thought, I'm gonna redo my slides. So I, I'm just hoping for a diverse array of opinions, mm -hmm. and I, I know I'll be surprised. Yeah. So i just like to end by asking you one thing about advice. So for someone who's starting out or looking maybe to make a change in their career, which you've done several times, what advice do you have that has guided you that you could share with us? I think there's uh, one piece of advice about listening and the other one is about impressions. And the advice about listening is that listening is not waiting to talk. Listening is active and listening isn't sitting there waiting to jump in as soon as there's a little break. It's like really, you know, maybe there's going to be a little dead air because I'm going to say something and you're thinking about what to say back. That's really truly listening. Mm -hmm. And if people can, you know, listen and, and take advice from somebody who sees you differently than you see yourself, but really learn to listen. And the other piece of advice I would give is about impressions. That you're always, whether you know it or not, your behavior and how you are is making impressions. And I don't mean about what you put on Facebook or your Twitter. I mean what you how, how you work every day. Yeah. What you do, what, who you bring to the office and how you show up and what you're like. And and you know, when you get your performance review, sometimes you're really surprised because you're like, they actually saw all this. Wow. But, mm -hmm. be, you know, be who you really want to be because that's what you're telegraphing to people. That's terrific yeah. advice. Thank it you. was so nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And uh, please stay tuned because we have a lot more great perspectives coming up. Thanks.